that's innovation. That's the type of innovation that we need. Yeah. Um, but lifting heavy weights just to lift heavy weights, that's not, you know, it's not good for uh, an athlete whose job isn't lifting heavy weights. Zach, how's it going, bro? It's good, man. Happy you to be are, here. Without question, the uh, the online media king, the, the most prominent person we've ever interviewed for the Cheeky Midweeky. So, we're, we're <laughs> really? Honored. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. We're, uh, we're honored to have you. Yeah, I'm honored to be here, man. Cool, man. So, let's just, uh, let's just dive in. In terms of um, Olympic lifting, and you're you're doing the classic your strength coach cliche of transitioning to BJJ as you get older. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> how, I've been called out on that. How do you find those two things? Because the 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 archetypal classic BJJ posture and the everything in my body hurts plus Olympic lifting. I've seen you do it online quite successfully with your guys. Like, how do you, how do you put those two things together? Uh, well, it's like anytime I implement something that's skill oriented, like it, you know, in itself, Olympic weightlifting is pretty skill based. We know that, uh, from, from, you know, looking at it as a sport, but the way that I implement it is, you know, I always have like a solid progression from, and, and it never gets to the point where we really, really care about technique. Having said that the technique is always good enough to keep them from being injured. And what I found is there are certain tools within the realm of what people would consider Olympic lifting, uh, that are super simple and super safe. Uh, and they get what I want out of them. And, and also like, I only use like maybe 10% of my train that my training, uh, with my guys, uh, like 10% of it is Olympic lifting. Like we'll go entire blocks without Olympic lifting. For okay. sure. Yeah. Like I'm not, it, it's, I come from a strength and conditioning background. Like, um, I, I was at, uh, Northwestern and then Texas A&M and like, you know, if you wanted Olympic lifting in there, sure, but just have a good progression. But for the most part, it just wasn't, it's not like the most important thing, you know? Um, and, and people think I have a bias towards it for obvious reasons. Um, I think it's, you know, what people confuse what they see with everything that there is, you know, but right. I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, so would you say things like <clears throat> um, catching in a power position as opposed to like a full squat? We'll get yes. Rid of the catch. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it always starts from, I mean, usual. Yeah. I would say 90% of the time it's going to start from the low hang. So you start from posture and then you go to a lower position, like kind of like a jumping position and then go from there. That's yeah. because you can develop the posture from standing, which is much easier than developing it from the floor takes a lot less time on my end and there's a lot less risk for injury or any problems like that. Um, what I use, what I do to teach people is I almost treat the weightlifting portion or the Olympic weightlifting portion as a extension of the warm up, And it's totally inconsequential. I get it in their minds. Like, I don't care how much you lift. You'll never lift enough to impress me ever because it's not your sport. <laughs> I want to get something out of this movement, maybe eight weeks from now, until then we're going to get a lot of stuff out of a lot of other movements. We're going to continue building this base of this warm up, right? Like if I teach them some sort of like barbell, uh, complex warm up, like literally a complex, not a, not a, not complexity. Um, if I give them a complex with some reps and sets, they get nice and warm and they're building the skill without really thinking about it. Again, I, I don't want people to go into the gym and think really hard. Like I want them to get their workout in and leave, um, especially BJJ guys and actually any sport. They're so beat up that mental acuity is everything. Mm. This is like the main thing I've learned with these guys because I've never worked with athletes who have trained this much that when they get into the gym, I don't have time to be like, hey, here's a new exercise. Or I do have time to do that, but I don't have their minds. Uh, hey, here's a new exercise. Let me explain it. Let's drill it. And then let's do it. Here's a new exercise. Explain, drill, do. You know, I can only do that once or twice a session. 
you know, without them just wanting to fall asleep. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much my, my basis for, for programming lifts. So, so with limited focus time, we just keep the main thing, the main thing, right? Yeah. And it, the main thing is never an Olympic lift. The main thing is usually some sort of variation of, you know, uh, the squat or, uh, some sort of deadlift or maybe some sort of press. Um, it could be like certain days we will just jump, like do plyometrics, um, rather than weightlifting altogether, or we'll just warm up with like fun weightlifting. Like <laughs> one, one time I had them do split jerks and they were like having so much fun, but also getting in a good workout, you know, uh, that was like an extension of the warm up before plyometrics. So it's just things like that little tricks. Is it, is it like a, a kind of like DUP approach that you take where you're going to yes. have like a faster day, a heavier day. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because they, their levels of fatigue change drastically. The coolest thing is I, because I'm at the gym training as well, I feel certain levels of fatigue too. And it's oh, yeah. likely that they're going to feel similar or, or, you know, they might feel more or less depending on whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely daily undulating, like, for sure. I'm not going to be stubborn and be like, you guys got to hit your numbers today. It's heavy all week. You know, it's like, um, sometimes like it's, this is going to sound crazy, but sometimes we will literally warm up squat, do like one accessory and leave. You did that yesterday, right? I did that for myself, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but I, but I will do that with, with my athletes too, because like, they're just fucking shot. Yeah. And so what I try to do is like get them in the zone. Like we're just going to squat for the next 45 minutes and yeah. they're just practicing. Then the music gets a little louder. They have a little fun and then get the hell out of here and, yeah. and get ready for your second session. You know, I'll tell you one thing for me that coming from a field sport background and then that being my job as well as a strength coach, you, I think if you're doing things well, you learn fairly early on that you have to be doing sport practice first and then lifting after just because they're, they're running around out there. You don't want to be running around on fatigue legs because of injury risk and so on. But then interestingly, putting myself in jujitsu, I learned that you have to do the reverse because doing an hour of like isometric and breath holding and like all this tension in your arms, they'll be like, oh, I'm just going to go do heavy rows and squats and deadlifts. Right. I found it's completely the, the other way around. Like I have to lift first and then, and then roll. Yeah, that isometric aspect of it is really confusing to me. It's yeah. really hard to deal with. Um, there's really no other sport like it. I can't think of one, especially like gi type of uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But I would say all of our competitors, like they're, they have fun in the gi. They sometimes do the gi, but they're all no gi guys. Yeah. Um, and you're one of these sick fucks that actually likes the gi. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it, man. I really how, how do. How did you get involved in jiu-jitsu? Uh, my buddy came to visit me for my 30th birthday and yeah. he's like, man, I've been doing jujitsu. And my professor told me to go to this gym. He's like, do you want to come? I'm like, yeah, I've tried it like a couple of years ago. I did like a trial class. Yeah. Um, and so I went with him. Then I went the next day and then he left and I just kept going. So <laughs> that's how I started. And that was about, yeah, like that was a year and a little bit more. So you started in Austin? Yeah. 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 So lucky. Like that's probably like the American capital of jujitsu, you know? Oh yeah. My, the room that I'm in is crazy and uh, crazy good. And I've been into other places to train. Yeah. Uh, and I can feel the difference like immediately, you know? Yeah. 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 You, you guy, is it Cody? He just. Uh... Cody and uh, William Tackett and Andrew Tackett as well. Um, yeah 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 so, so did, did, did he win um adcc trials or he placed so um william got second to uh cade rutolo yeah who you know he's very very good so cade got an automatic bid to um adcc's but i think william will end up getting invited okay and uh cody got third place yeah, so yeah. they had to fight each other in the semis which was interesting um Cody is all in on MMA. So uh, yeah, you showed that video of him just fucking sleeping a guy after 13 seconds. Yeah. And that was an NFL uh, player. That was an NFL really? player. Yeah. And supposedly this guy, um, you know, he's just the most athletic dude, any martial arts room he walks into. 
he automatically becomes the most athletic dude. And, you know, you can get a nice chip on your shoulder being the most athletic dude when you walk into any room. The thing is, Cody's like trained so hard as in jujitsu. Like it's, it's, it's very weird when you think of black belts in jujitsu going into the MMA rather than guys who are just like kind of good fighters, kind of good athletes going into MMA. Yeah. Right. These black belts have this sick fuck amount of training. Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Right. And, and Cody is that guy. And, and Cody's the wake up call to the athlete right there. I think, and I think Cody will be the first to tell you that this guy is probably more athletic than him. Yeah. You know, more powerful. Uh, but who knows, who knows what that actually means, but Cody was the wake up call for him or the sleep call for him. Cause yeah, I mean, there's, there's something about it. Like I was, well, you know, to, to, uh, to follow on to that question, obviously you, you, uh, your, your best competition list for something like 180 clean and jerk, 140 snatch. Is that about right? Yeah. Yeah. So about that area. Yeah. Comfortably stronger than any person you're ever going to roll with. I think that the one piece of research about elite level black belt competitors is like, oh, maybe a hundred kilo bench is like average. It's like crazy yeah. impressive. Well, because I think, <laughs> I think actually, as you become a black belt, you should just only focus on strength. That's my theory. Um, what, ha- what I realize is like at a wipe, it's, it's about finishing tactics and, and or, or finishing uh, like steps and finishing mechanics yeah. And, and if you want to finish a position, you have to nail it. And if you don't nail it, the guy gets up, the guy moves to a new guard, and then you have to try again. That continual retrying is what gasses people out. This is a fitness game. In my opinion, from what I've realized, jujitsu, martial arts is a fitness game. And the more times you miss, the more times, the, the, the more important your fitness has to be. So like mm-hmm. as a white belt, you know, I'm not going to finish a guy unless my mechanics are really good. And it's really hard that a, to, to find a white belt who has good finishing mechanics. So it doesn't matter how strong I am. If I don't have the right movements, he's going to escape. And then I have to try again. Yeah. I can use my strength. And if it works, great, I did it. But what if it doesn't work? I just expended two times as much energy as Cody does. Yeah. You know, I, I expended I uh, like the, the best conditioning program on earth is called don't make a mistake. <laughs> right. And think about like throwing a punch, how much it sucks to miss, to miss like it, that huge extension. And now you got to pull everything back. It's very similar to like uh, in jujitsu. If you, you fight your ass off of a guy's passing your guard, yeah. you fight so hard. Uh, and right as you get, you know, recover your guard, he passes again. And then now he's in your side control. Not, it would have been better had he just been in your side control the first time he tried, but now you're fucking tired and he's in side control. That is what, that is exactly what it feels to be strong in this sport and not, not as much skilled. I think if you have the skill to finish people all the time from anywhere and, and, really be solid in, in your mechanics and like your percentages of attacks. If you have that, get as strong as you fucking can. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's sort thing. of like a, that's sort of like a universal message. We <clears throat> always spread around um, strength coach networks, like be good at what you need to be good at, you know, in team sports, uh, the, the better decision-making the most efficient teams, the one that, you know, um, come up with the goal with the least effort, are the ones that look fitter just by exactly what you explained. The same as, you know, older players and people be like, oh, they're into age and they're still like keeping their fitness levels. It's like, they just don't do anything unnecessary. They just know exactly where the ball's going to go and they just cut corners, but in a smart way. So <laughs> they look fitter for longer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually, this is really interesting. <clears throat> the club coach at Texas A&M, the, the club rugby coach, asked me to do the strength and conditioning for them. So I did for a year. And it was fun. And we had like really solid players. Like um, actually one dude from Zimbabwe, uh, one dude, a couple dudes from England. 
Uh, one dude from South Africa. As always, a South African guy. <laughs> yeah, there's always there is two actually. Yeah. Um, and and you know we sucked compared to a team like Lindenwood, and yeah. it, it wasn't because maybe they were fitter, maybe they had different stuff, but they would catch passes. We wouldn't. It was yeah. that simple. <laughs> like we we just like could not string together passes, and every. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's like, again, every time you make a mistake, you have to double your effort. Yeah. You have to double the amount of work you have to do. If you're prepared to do that, then go do it there. Like I can imagine there's some sort of offenses that maybe they're not as efficient, but they just run you to, into the ground. Japan. Like they just can. Yeah. So they just continue and they, they're not that, you know, they're, they're not capitalizing on everything, but if they hit you a hundred times, they're going to get 10 of those. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas some other teams maybe hit you, uh, you know, 20 times and they'll get you 15 or yeah. that'll get you 10. So um, I think it's a much more probable or much more difficult thing to get someone to prepare somewhat, prepare someone to suck, right? <laughs> yeah. Pre- prepare someone, prepare someone to be less skillful by having better fitness. Yeah. I think that's harder but some people get away with it. Well, you know, um, that's one of the things they talk about in the, the Danaher team, which is, I, 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 you know, I'm sure you know, when you start out, every role is a hard role. And then as you get better and better, you can, you can pick, oh, this one's going to be a hard one, this one's going to be an easy one, and so on. And, and if you're the, the best black belt in your gym, you, you never actually get taken to that place likewise in positions you never get put in an end stage triangle escape for example or an end stage armbar escape and it's you never actually find yourself in that situation until you come up against the best black belt from another gym in competition so the way that they they tried to do it and i i tried to adapt it to team sports which is he says we're going to begin from the end game i'm going to put you in the worst position possible to start with every single session and you're going to have to find a way to get out of it and that kind of like idea of situational sparring in combat sports, I really like the idea of adapting that to uh, field sports, which is what's the, you know, like you said, what is the worst case scenario where you are going to have to empty the tank and every now and then you want to touch that in uh, preseason. So, you know, that kind of like bleed on the training field, laugh on the battlefield. Yeah. And I also can think of exercise selection in the same, same way. So if my goal is to target the hamstrings for instance instead of a deadlift we'll do an rdl where we're like really you know it's like why would i do sometimes people want to do the deadlift because it's just the heaviest possible lift yeah it's it's the coolest and heaviest one but if the if the reality is like i just want to target the hamstrings so i'm going to make it so that the you know the um the lever arm is the longest and that I can put maximum amount of tension in my hamstrings and grow the post chain like that. Um, and there are so many different occasions where I think a strength coach should do things like that is go for uh, a more of a disadvantaged position, put yeah. their athletes in a more disadvantaged position, uh, even though they're going to have to lift lighter weight. That seems to me to be, I think, you know, like, You've, you've spoken about Mark Ripito, another person I think that talks a great game about weightlifting that without any proof is Louis Simmons. And to me, Louis Simmons' biggest contribution is the fact that he recognizes what you just talked about and the machines that he's designed and the exercises that he's come up with to like maximize stress to the tissue. Right. A unit of like orthopedic stress. Like I went on some of those machines. I went and visited him. And went on some of those machines and I was like feeling it later that day. And I was like, fuck. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that stuff. I think that's amazing. I think that's, that's innovation. That's the type of innovation that we need. Um, But lifting heavy weights, just to lift heavy weights. That's not, you know, it's not good for uh, an athlete whose job isn't lifting heavy weights. (laughs) Um, But I think, you know, as far as the, I, I did just make a video on Mark Rip, or not on Mark Ripito on on Louis Simmons. I don't know if you saw caught that one. 
I watched the repertoire one. I didn't see the Louis Simmons one. Yeah, so it's almost the exact same. Uh, Louis just did a Olympic weightlifting podcast. And I, I mean, I, I think he missed the mark quite a bit. Uh, yeah. So so I just, I commented on it. And I, I made a video about that. Um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like oh, you know, I, the the repertory thing of like oh, if Lash had deadlifted a thousand, he'd clean and jerk six hundred. It's like well, if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a bike. Yeah, <laughs> right. <wasn't. laughs> I, I I also like so I like to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. Like I like to, I I really like to maybe say his point better than him. Steel man. Yeah. And so the funny thing is, is like people will will be like, oh, you took him, took what he's saying out of context. It's like, well, actually I didn't. Yeah. He literally said those words. Yeah. If we don't mean what we say, what's the point of saying anything? So yeah. what I'm going to continue, what I'm going to do now is like, I think maybe he meant this, hmm. right? I think he he's created this, this ghost that lives in American weightlifting where we're, we were so inept at like figuring out weightlifting, you know, back in the day, uh, basically like our technical innovation, our systematic innovation in the sport completely stopped. Mm. Uh, and, and the Soviets, you know, and, and everyone else just took off. Is and then <clears throat> what's that? Well, I was going to ask you because yeah, of- yeah, it's drugs. Yes. But, but it's also <laughs> just like, but it, yeah, but it, but it's also like, you know, a, any team could be seen as like drugs, but like, you know, I'm sure rugby systems have gotten better. I'm sure football has gotten better in, in the sense of like the amount of effort per year that a team will put in mm. to making them perform better. is just, it's just grows, grows, grows like to the point where like there's, you know, 10, 15 coaches on a coaching staff. There's a sports scientist. There's all this shit. Weightlifting was a good sport for us, but when the rubber hit the road, we weren't there. And then, then when we, you know, there were some people that stuck around and they sucked. One was they weren't athletic. Like they were pretty athletic, but they weren't selected. Can I take my theory? Yeah. Yeah. The, the worst thing to ever happen to American weightlifting is the NFL. And the best thing to ever happen to American weightlifting is CrossFit. And if you look right. at the gains that have been made, is it, do you think it's a fair comment that the gains have mostly been made on the, the women's side or guys that are so young like CJ Cummings that they got him before football? Yeah, so, so I, I agree. Um, but all, all I want to say is that the reason why Ripito and Simmons say that weightlifting isn't good is mm. because of strength and methodology. Yeah. Not because of the fact that we didn't and kind of don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and oh, it, it's one of those things like, oh, if I cared, I'd be good at it. Like, that's what people will say back to me. It's like, well, that's kind of how it works. We care a lot about football in this country. We care a lot about basketball. We care a lot about fucking swimming we care you know yeah yeah and therefore we put a lot of money and a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds are like the amount of diversity throughout our country of types of people and training ideas and we just pick and choose the best of them and put them in football it's like yeah we're gonna have fucking monsters doing football and they get paid a lot of money and they get scholarships and all this shit yeah you know obviously they're not going to choose weightlifting but what we've seen is like the I'm not so sure that the football build is going to translate exactly to the 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 weightlifter. Yeah, um, there are. But there will be crossover. There will be different things as far as CrossFit fits into this. Um, in 2009, there were uh, 9000 active uh, USAW members. So this is actual lifters. Yeah. Um, and then in 2019, there were 27,000. So it tripled in size. And in 2009, that's pretty much when cro- the CrossFit boom started. So yeah. that's, that's absolutely a fact. The, on the women's side, we see CrossFit helping us out in the sense that we're getting medalists from that have started in CrossFit. Um, yeah. On the men's side, I know a CrossFitter right now who is national champion. Um, 
obviously he completely switched over to, yeah. to weightlifting. Um, there's a decent amount of CrossFitter dudes and, um, yeah, that, that's, that's really where we're at as far as, uh, United States weightlifting goes, but yeah. to tie it back in with what Louie and Mark were saying, it's like, they don't know what's wrong with weightlifting because they're not fucking involved in it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Could you imagine like if I was criticizing American rugby, which I could because they're not good. They fucking suck. <laughs> right. Right. But if yeah. I said that I knew the answers, someone yeah. could easily come back and go, okay, fucking do it. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh shit, you're right. I can't, <laughs> I won't. Uh, you know, their, their thing about, well, if you, if you increase the force going into the bar, you increase acceleration, blah, 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 blah. Yes. But everything affects everything. Yeah. Some of the, some of the sacrifices that you're going to have to make to your clean technique and to your rate of force development to increase your limit strength to deadlift, you know, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Of course, the amount of effort it takes to take someone's deadlift from 600 to 650 is, you know, if, if they are, uh, let's say they're at 85 kilos body weight, yeah. that's a tremendous amount of effort for a skilled weightlifter. And yeah. like you said, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Uh, but I also think like, yeah, we, um, strength is important and mm -hmm. who the fuck said it wasn't Yeah, right. Like that's where we're at like louis and mark want to continually say we're not strong enough or that we don't use strength enough like from who from where where did you where did you come up with this assertion i just yeah. went to the american open finals and if i asked every single fucking coach there i'd say hey do you try to get your athletes higher force production not rate of force production huh? but just force <laughs> production and they'd go yeah i go yeah. okay cool thanks yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of uh, in terms of global weightlifting, looking at the example of Lasher, because obviously he's the strongest to ever do it, he's maybe the exception. Do you think weightlifting as a sport is stronger now than it was in the glory days of steroids? Because they keep moving the weight classes around. Yeah, and that's a really like, good question. Like the ball, like if you look at some of those, like some of those old school, I think super heavies have increased. Like if you look at like the world, you know, the snatch world record as it goes up, some of these lighter guys, like apples, yeah, to apples, oh, fucking hell, they were probably stronger thirty years ago. No, they were, they were stronger. Yes. Um, as far as popularity goes, uh, to the public eye, I don't. I don't think it has gone anywhere. Maybe it's gone down. There yeah. used to be the NBC wild wide world of sports. Yeah. And uh, that was, you know, they would show crazy footage from different sports and stuff like that. And then they would have weightlifting in it. Yeah. And, and it was kind of like a world's strongest man competition. Like, I think the idea of weightlifting back in the day was like, here are some strong freaks. And now it's become this like dry Olympic sport. I'm, I'm talking about like actual one rm strength in in the lifts oh you're so saying like, it's oh yeah, stronger yeah compared uh, to the world records in the previous weight classes to now no you think we're stronger now no 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 i think oh. i think they were stronger back then probably yeah. probably Just you know if yeah the drugs like the the use of drugs back like the stories that they would tell about the bulgarian team yeah was so insane there's this one guy, his name was, um, God, I can't even think of it. Uh, his, his last name was, oh yeah, Valentin Hristov. Yeah. And he, he wrote a book about, uh, or yeah, he wrote a book about his experience in, 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 on the Bulgarian team. And I think they, they like barred it from being sold because he pretty much ousted them for like the most insane shit they would do. But as an 18 year old or 19 year old, he snatched 160 kilos and he clean and jerked like maybe 180. Maybe yeah. he was doing, yeah, which is definitely possible for like the best teenager, right? He could have been a freak athlete. Yeah. He said, I immediately was approached by Ivan Abajayev, the head coach for Bulgaria. And he said, I want you to train with me. So, his numbers then went from 180 to 210, and that 
was where they had implemented Dianabol and I forget the other drug. I think it was, um, it's just a very common one, DECA. Yeah. So uh, it was Dianabol and DECA. And then <clears throat> they kept upping the dosage until a, about a two years later, two or three years later, he had snatched 200 and clean and jerk 250 in training. And he said, in the meantime, my uh, pee was the color of cola. And I was seeing spots and passing out during training all the time. Fucking it, it was not a, hey, we're going to beat the tests type of thing. It was yeah. like, there are no tests. And if someone, there, there are stories of people coming over, like uh, WADA agents, like trying to sneak in through the mountains of Bulgaria to try and catch these guys. Yeah. You know, people escaping tests, not letting people cross the border. It's pretty difficult to uh, have a national testing system in North Korea. Okay. North Korea gets yeah. to compete internationally. Yeah. How in the fuck is that fair? <laughs> and how is anyone going to say anything else to me? I just refuse to hear any other story. North Korea. We're going to send agents into North Korea to test well, them? I heard, uh, China as well. It's like, I heard yeah. the, the few things like, basically, you'll go to your military service and the agents will come up to the army base and they'll be like, oh, we're here to test that guy. And they'll be like, who? No. Yeah. Who? He's not here. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. That's one of the things that I realized in China as well is like, piracy is part of their life. Yeah. And I, I don't mean that in like a negative way. Like, it's part, it's like, Yours is mine. Mine is yours. You know, they're, it, it, yeah. And, and like, I'll go to the, they call them the night markets yeah. when I was in China. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, everything is copyrighted. Like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want. Like they just, they've made it themselves. Like there is no IP. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's a similar situation in their culture. If you're trying to test them, like you said, they're going to be like, who are you talking about? They're not here. Oh, he's gone. I heard, I heard they you know? do, like they rotate as well. Like they'll have like four squads. So maybe you, you get a medal and you're going to like retire for a little bit. Then they have the B squad. Then they drop someone. And then, oh, I'm coming out of retirement for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, they just have massive numbers of people that can step up and, and, you know, yeah. win medals, which is just crazy. They also, you know, they give a shit. They, they had like, they realized this is a sport where we can win eight medals and they did. They won eight. Yeah. They won eight medals. I think it was gold, eight gold medals. Yeah. For a country at the Olympics to flex on how awesome you are. That's a massive thing. Like they don't want to lose weightlifting. So they're going to put more and more money into that. That's what a lot of these countries, that's why it, the sport became corrupt as we know it is because it was a sport of countries who had no medals. Azerbaijan does not have medals in the Olympics, but damn, they're fucking good at weightlifting and they got a medal. You know, yeah. they're not going to let that shit go. So they're going to do whatever they can. They create this like, you know, they, they create this uh, dr like crime syndicate where the, the, the IWF, the head of the IWF is literally taking cash from people um, or paying people cash if they send him, send him pictures of the ballots that they voted for him with, right? Yeah. It's just shit like that. Um, and, and so the sport has become a total shit show, but yeah. in America, we don't really care. We have a fun time doing our own little national thing. Yeah. So, I mean, on the, uh, on the topic of your, uh, your YouTube channel, did, did it just start organically or did, did, it, did it start with a purpose? Yeah, I have a really funny story about this. I um, I quit my job at Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I always love your uh, takes on strength and conditioning, like <laughs> in the collegiate field, yeah. because it's just like hits home for me so, so <laughs> fucking much. Um, and we can, I guess we could talk about that. But I, so I started just personal training and like I had the, but I had this shit. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry, wrong one. Your favorite. Hey, oh, I have that. I have one too. Yeah. But yeah I let yeah. mine expire, right? I let oh mine yeah. Expire. Oh yeah. Mine expired. <laughs> yeah, oh, mine expired. Was mine. Yeah. I was head of a department, managing other coaches. Didn't have my CSCS. 
I fucking spoke at the, the NSCA uh, coaches conference. And then the summer of pandemic, I was like, fuck, I better do this. So I went in to do my CFCS and I was like, please let me fucking pass this. But yeah, I did. 76 minutes for the whole thing. <laughs> so um, what were we talking about? Your YouTube. story with the uh, between two balls. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so I had I um, started personal training and I had like all these certifications. I was way overqualified, but I didn't really care. Um, I was happy to be out of that job. Um, and I... Uh, one of my friends said, just showed me YouTube and was like, you, you should make videos on there. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, isn't that places for like people to watch like uh, viral Make-up videos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like viral videos of cats and shit. Like, what are you talking about? And then they, he showed me a bunch of YouTubers and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. I had no idea that people have like, like they use it almost like social media. Yeah. Uh, and so what I was doing at the time was I was kind of rotating like i had competed in weightlifting a bunch and i just wanted to get in shape so i got went back into crossfit and i was basically creating these vlogs of my days in crossfit like what i wanted to accomplish all this shit and then i posted it to the reddit crossfit page and there was this one comment being like look i'm going to be honest with you there's nothing particularly amazing about this video like you're it's not like you're you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or like, you don't look like anything special. So it's like, if you, if you did have shitty content and you looked awesome, people would care. Okay. And, and if you had shitty content and you were like really good at CrossFit, people would care, but you're neither of those things. And then they're like, you know, a bunch of other things, like you have no mission, there's no direction in what you're doing. And, and that was like, okay, wow. First off, fuck you. Uh, but second off, <laughs> but second off, you're right. You know, um, uh, another thing they suggested was, what are you an expert in? And I thought about that. I'm like, wow, shit. Like, they're right. I'm going to change this whole thing around. And I actually did my first video on uh, like three different things you can utilize in the snatch that people don't talk about. Yeah. So like, and, and that are very, very important. And, you know, that video got like a thousand views. And I used to get emails every time I got a subscriber. I got like 25 emails. Like, oh, you got a subscriber. And I was like, damn, this is so cool. I have yeah. hundreds of more videos like that that I can make off the top of my head. So I continued to make a video a week for the next four years. Uh, and now I'm now I'm, that's where I'm at, you know. I could have, and those, those videos, those vlogs, those fucking CrossFit vlogs, they will never see the light of day, by the way. So I deleted those quickly. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so that's, that was it. It was like, I found what I was an expert in. I found the story that I wanted to tell, basically my experience in this. Because my experience was teaching everyday people how to snatch and clean and jerk. Yeah. And if I had utilized the, 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 the way that people put that out for me to utilize before Wouldn't you would see really fucking bad lifting. You would see yeah. CrossFit snatching and clean and jerking like your average Joe snatching and clean and jerking in a CrossFit class back in that time where I was, was fucking atrocious. And I can say that confidently. And so what I did was I developed a system that could get the average Joe to snatch and clean and jerk. I 100% did that because it was painful for me to watch. I found things that people weren't saying that they were doing, right? I found, I found things that Russians, Ukrainians, Chinese were doing and not saying. And I said, well, how can I figure out a way to get that to other people? So I just developed these random weird ass drills and they worked. And, and the main thesis behind all of that, if anyone who wants to do this is like, utilize your experience it's much more important to utilize your experience than to always stand on the shoulders of giants to always be like oh well they did it this way so i need to do it the same way authenticity yeah I, I and it, like well, speaking in your own voice and like being authentic as well it's just people exactly if if you take a drill or an exercise that is tried and true by other people and you're seeing things that you don't like, make the adjustment and teach it that way. 
it's still the same exercise. It's still the same thing, but you have adapted it to, to the way that you have gathered all of this information. Now you make changes. Now, you know, that's how you teach it. Yeah. It's all the same shit. We all do the same shit all the time. I can list off the main exercises that almost every coach is going to have the foundation on, but there's going to be millions of different ways in which that coach teaches it or, or progresses the lifter through it. Awesome. Oh, that's a good spot to, uh, to wind up. Where can um, people find you online? Uh, coach ZT on uh, Instagram and my YouTube channel, Zach Tellender. Also, if anyone wants to start weightlifting, uh, and want some programs, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash that calendar and yeah, sign up there and, and start lifting. Cool, man. We'll link it all in the, uh, in the video. Cool. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.